Y'all, I'm so ready for this. New moon in Virgo. But before I get to that, let me address the elephant in the room because many of you have not seen me for a couple of weeks. As soon as Venus went direct, I had my hair done. My kids don't like it. I'm dealing with that. <laughs> but I'm more excited about this new moon in Virgo. And let me tell you, I am a Virgo. Many of you know that. But this is very exciting. This is very exciting. So it's happening on September 14th at 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Virgo, of course, is ruled by Mercury, which is retrograde until the day after, until the 15th. Is that coincidence? So, this is the start of something new. New moons usually are. And you know how I am. I follow the moon. I uh, release from the full moon to the new moon, and I manifest from the new moon to the full moon. Now, I don't do it actually on the specific days of the new moon or the full moon. I start as soon as the moon starts waxing or waning. Most of us do. But I just want to clarify that. This is a great time to start something new, but it may have some delays or some reworking, like redoing the framework um, of a solid idea that has a good foundation, but just needs some, like, it needs some enhancements, needs to be reworked. So you probably had a good solid idea during this Mercury retrograde or during this Venus retrograde. You probably had some really good ideas. Now it's time to polish them up a, a bit, rework the ideas, rework it, and then send it out. Because you got to understand we're still in the shadow of retrograde for a little bit. Mm, isn't that fun? Now, this is definitely a time to, to focus on work and health. Um, this could also be a time to work solo. So if you're working on something that you're working in a partnership with like a group of people, a bunch of people, or just one other person, this could be a time for both of you to go to your corners or for the group of you to go to your individual places, work on your part of it, and then bring it back to the organization. It's a good time to do that. So do some solo work here. This is a great time to start healthy habits and mindful practices. Mindful practices in your work and healthy habits in your personal life. Um, Jupiter will be retrograde, so this could make us feel a little less abundant, especially if you have a lot of Scorpio placements in your chart, especially if your Scorpio placement is in your midhaven. That's about your career. That's about your job. So think about that. And if Scorpio is ruling your eighth house, again, Take a look at your chart, astro.com, Cafe Astrology, free charts. I love the explanations on Cafe Astrology, but I like the charts better on astro.com. You know, I get a little picky. I am a Virgo. Now, if you have a lot of Virgo placements or if you have a lot of Virgo in your chart, you will be working harder than ever during this time. <laughs> no surprise there. But you'll have to wait a minute for the recognition. And that's okay. That's all right. Virgos like to like do a lot of work behind the scenes and then have the big like explosion, you know, have that big like fireworks display. It's good. This is good. If you are a Taurus, Capricorn, Leo, or Cancer, this is a time to bring something beautiful into your life, to do something beautiful with your home, your job, your office, your hair. Ha ha, Venus is direct, so go to it. This is, this is a great time to beautify. That could also be with health, because if you're a Cancer, Libra, or a Scorpio, you should really be focusing on your nutrition. You should really be focusing on what you're eating and how your body is utilizing it. Again, these are placements. It's not just your sun, moon, or rising, but that is a big part of it. So look at the placements in your chart. If you have Gemini, Aquarius, Sagittarius, Aries, or Pisces placements, you really need to think before you speak because it's not what you say, it's how you say it. This new moon in Virgo is gonna be fantastic, truly, truly awesome. I love this, I always feel like this is the precursor to the beginning of fall because the next thing that we have is the fall equinox when the sun moves into Libra. I'm here for it, really. It's gonna be great. I mean, why wouldn't it be? It's a Virgo moon. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. 
Let's see what's going on with your zodiac sign now. Hello Libra and welcome to your readings at the round table. I'm Jennifer and this is Mouse. We've had a day, let me tell you. Got Jasmine over here. She's being a good girl. She's napping in the in the corner in her bed. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So today Mouse has done a lot of fun stuff. He accidentally disconnected my microphone in one of my readings. I didn't know it, so I did the entire reading without audio. Still got to figure that out. Thank you, Mercury Retrograde. And then he proceeded to go out through the cat door and get into a big old fight. It wasn't with another cat, I don't think, because I couldn't find the other cat. But i um, pretty sure it was a chipmunk or a squirrel or something. So now my injured little friend is taking a nap. Yeah, good times. It's really good. Got blood all over my shirt. It was just fantastic. All right, Libra, <clears throat> this is a general reading, so if it resonates with you, that's great, and if it doesn't, that's okay, too. Make sure you check out your sun, moon, and rising sign, because sometimes you will uh, resonate more with your moon or your rising sign more than you do your sun sign. This is a card reading. It is not a horoscope, so um, you are more than welcome to watch your sun, moon, or rising, um, because most astrologers will tell you to watch your horoscope readings for your rising sign. And I get that, but I think we've had this discussion before. This is a card reading. A little bit different, right? I think he agrees. So let's see what the cards have for you for this wonderful new moon in Virgo. Hmm. Yeah, now Mars is in your sign, Libra. And Mars in your sign is a little, it's a little passive aggressive, to be honest with you. But, still better than being in Gemini. Because <laughs> I was so glad when Mars came out of Gemini and, oh my gosh, being retrograde and just being in Gemini for so long. It was just at that time when all the stuff stuff that had been hidden was coming out into the open. That was not an easy time. Uh-huh. Okay, Libra. All right, so the first card we're starting off with is the moon, imagination, and perception. The next card is the six of crystals, which is synergy and gratitude. The next card is the page of feathers, which is exploration and discovery. Then we have the wheel, which is change and possibilities. Then we have the Two of Feathers, which is Decisions and Direction. Okay, we got a lot going on here. Let me tell you. First of all, the Moon card being the first thing here, Imagination and Perception. You need to pay attention to what's going on around you. You need to pay attention, like, what's, what's happening like around you because there's things that are unfolding that you haven't been aware of. There's things that are unfolding that you haven't been aware of. I don't know how like they've like hid this light under a bushel. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know how that's happened, but there's definitely something that has not you, there's something that's going on that I feel like you definitely haven't been, I don't want to say it's necessarily deception, but I feel like it's like half-truths have been told. I get that. 
Um, this is definitely a time that you need to rely on your intuition. Now, some people may say that intuition is primary, primarily imagination. I don't necessarily know if I agree with that, but I think that you do need to pay attention to what's going on. There's something, there's something being hidden from you. It feels like it has to do with work or money or income stream or it, not necessarily, I'll say that, but most of the readings that I've been doing today have felt like work or income stream or business of some kind. Um, the Six of Crystals, Synergy and Gratitude. This is the thing, is you're looking for that equal give and take. You're looking for that, let me give, I want to be grateful, you know, I'll, I'll receive and be grateful, but I want to give and I want to give, like, you know, generously. You are looking for that equal give and take. Something, something has gone, I don't want to say wrong, but something has gone a little bit sideways with that. Again, I'm seeing a tie-in here with the moon, something being hidden, with the equal give and take. Maybe you think somebody is actually putting in a lot of energy, a lot of work, but I, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know. Um, the page of feathers, exploration and discovery. You know, the page cards are always messengers or messages. This is an important one because um, with the exploration and discovery, I think that you're going to be doing a lot of, I think you're going to be doing a lot of searching. You need to listen to your intuition. Channel in your intuition from spirit and put it into action because you're gonna you may have to be digging for the truth yeah you may have to be digging for the truth here and i feel like you're getting messages about it like which direction you need to go and how you need to how you need to continue um the wheel change and possibilities oh my gosh there is change coming in there's definitely change coming in. I don't feel like it's bad. I feel like it's a change for the better. I feel like this is something that was definitely part of destiny for you and a karma thing. So I, d I definitely feel like um, this is a change for the better. This is karma. This is destiny. And having the two of feathers come up right behind that does make me see that this is a crossroads energy for you. Decisions and directions, absolutely, 100%. This is a crossroads energy. Where, which way do you want to go? How do you want to proceed from here? Now that you've uncovered what was going on, how do you want to proceed? Because change is going to happen. How do you want to proceed? It's interesting. It's very interesting. This new moon is going to be an interesting one. Um, and I feel like, because the, the new moon in Virgo, I think I said this in the intro, it's not frivolous. This is not a, really, come on. This is not a frivolous moon. It's not like a fun-filled, like, woohoo moon. This is a, this is a moon of, like, work. It's not bad. I mean, you know, all, you can't have all fun and no work. I don't know what that would make Jack, since all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. But I think that, um, I think that this is a, a time of, this is a time of work. It's a time of really building or polishing up a foundation that you've been like working to achieve. And, <clears throat> and ultimately I think with Mercury going direct right after the new moon, that's putting like a, a kind of different spin on it as well. I mean, Jupiter's in retrograde now. At least your ruler has gone direct because I tell you, having Venus retrograde was a bear. Oh my gosh, that was a bite that stings. Mm -hmm. 
There's, okay, there's definitely something emotional that's happening here. Because we've got swords cards and three, we've got two swords cards and three cup cards. There's something emotional happening here. Okay, so we start out here with the seven of swords. Then we go to the page of cups. The three of cups. The six of swords. And the ace of cups. Okay, so the seven of swords card is a card that you feel like something's been taken from you. You feel like you've been like robbed of an opportunity or of, um, a, you know, energy or money or an idea or whatever. You've been robbed of that. That's what you feel like. I don't necessarily feel like they took everything. And now you've learned a lesson and you're prepared you're preparing and you're like all right that's not going to happen to me again and you're watching out for it <coughs> excuse me i better not be getting a cold you know these kids just went back to school i better not be getting a cold so um you're watching out for it you're prepared for it making sure that that doesn't happen again the thing is, though, the Page of Cups is um, a messenger card. I just said, like, page cards are messenger cards or messages. And this Page of Cups is about aligning yourself with energy. It's about aligning yourself with what you are attracting. You need to align yourself with what you want. <coughs> Excuse me. When you align yourself with what it is that you truly want, you'll be able to bring in anything. But this is about putting it together. You're not in alignment right now. Are you ready to do that? Maybe once you get prepared, you'll be able to align yourself. The other thing about the Six of Crystals card is the synergy. Align yourself. Align yourself with what it is that you want to bring in. With what you want. The Three of Cups, it does show me that you're going to have plenty of support on this journey. You're going to have plenty of support when you're working through this. When you're aligning yourself and you're saying, okay, I'm declaring this. This is what I want. You're going to have support here. And I feel like it's going to be really good. I feel like it's going to be really good because the next two cards really say it all. The Six of Swords is moving on to something that's better. Moving on to something that's easier. Moving on to something that you deserve. A better situation. In this instance, look, she's moving on to shore. She's got her little bag packed. She's got her shawl on. She's ready. She's ready to go. And she's manifested them to take her into shore <clears throat> and get out of the rough waters. And the Ace of Cups, oh my gosh, how perfect is this? The Ace of Cups energy is um, just a new emotional beginning. It's a new, it, it's just that fresh breath of emotions coming in for you. I know that's not the easiest for you, Libra. I know it's not. We've got a lot of sword energy here too. And feathers. Feathers is also sword energy. But the cup energy does lead me to believe that this is about, this is also very emotional. So you are at a crossroads. You are at a crossroads here. What do you want? You want to be prepared so that it doesn't, that doesn't happen to you again. But you need to align with the divine and get on your path. Or get back on your path, I should say. Align with the divine plan. Align with what it is that you truly want. Some good answers here. 
The Six of Swords, the Six of Swords is definitely, you're moving into a better place. And the Ace of Cups, again, this is a new emotional beginning. So once you dig through whatever this was, and you find out some solid answers here, Libra, it's going to lead you to change, which is destiny, and it's a better change crossroads, and then this new emotional beginning. It's a new moon, regardless of whether Mercury is still retrograde or not. It's a new beginning. emotional beginning for Libra. Interesting. Oregano. Oh my gosh. Who doesn't love oregano? <laughs> and it's a really, it's a powerful healer. Um, I really, a new emotional beginning and it has to do with like some sort of work. It has to do with that. Oh my gosh. Faith. Love that. Beaver, builder of home. Okay. All right. The first advice card comes from the animal deck. It is Beaver, builder of home. Beaver is the dreamer of a safe family and a well-constructed home that leaves many doors open. It protects what it has through conscientious work. Teamwork honors the, contrib the contributions of others. Achievement is gained in the power of consistent work and a cheerful demeanor. I love that. Love it. All right, the next advice card is faith. It is humanity and benevolence. Stay calm. Trust the good in yourself and others. See the light in the world. Aww. Okay, the last advice card comes from the Essential Oil deck. It is Oregano. The emotional aspects of Oregano, it releases anger, feeling peeved, prideful, strong-willed. It instills humility, flexibility, and release of control. It creates the ability to release the need to control creates humility to encourage growth and a healthier connection with self and your creator. Centering thought. I need, I release my need to control and to always be right. I see the value in others and their own individuality. I release the toxic relationships in my life. Well, I think that's important. 
And the affirmation, why is it so easy for me to be humble? And the chakras are the heart and the throat. So this is going to be a time of you speaking up for sure. I, I think that there's some important stuff going on here, Libra. I think that you do need to... Um, I think you need to sit back and really work through whatever this is that you're uncovering, whatever this is that you're trying to figure out that's like been hidden from you, or maybe just the half truths that have been told to you, because it's going to bring about a big change that I think is very necessary in your life, which leads you to a crossroads. Like, which way do you want to go? What do you want to do? I think this is a wonderful opportunity for you. I think this is a this is going to be fantastic and it's certainly going to lead you to that new emotional beginning that you deserve yay thank you so much for joining me today libra i appreciate your support so much i am enjoying myself immensely on this new channel so make sure you check out my website metaphysicalroundtable.com to see um the specials that i have going on for this month I may post it on social media to advertise it out a little more, but I am not doing that until Mercury goes direct. So, mm, you can have first pick if you go check on my website. <laughs> Thank you again for joining me today. And until we see each other again, have a wonderful new moon in Virgo and get out there and make your magic. Bye. Mm -hmm.